Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our Series 11 content after kicking off with it in yesterday's episode. And as I mentioned in yesterday's episode, what I'm going to do, I normally put up a, a full video with about 10 sample teams, but this week what we're going to do is do a sample team every single day and they'll stay up for about four weeks. So you'll have a good chance to, to use them and um, at least they won't go down straight away. So uh, today we're kicking off with Groudon. We had Zash in yesterday. If you are interested in a Zash in team to kind of start playing in Series 11 now, we've got Dynamax back. Go back and check yesterday's video out. Maybe watch this one first. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we're kicking off with Groudon today. So Groudon, um, obviously, going to be one of the, the bigger used more restrict uh, more used restricted pokemon we've seen a lot of players have a, a bunch of success with groudon great pokemon has a drought ability bringing the sun and then you've got a lot of pokemon surrounding it that can take advantage of that you've got the charizard for one with that solar power uh we've given the safety goggles on this team because i feel like it is a pretty common item on it but it does give you a way around sleep powder it gives you a way around rage powder as well so things like venusaur that are going to have that chlorophyll boost uh aren't as threatening as they would have been before we've got ancient power on here just to be able to hit opposing charizards if we're in that situation uh it gives us a way to change the weather if we need to as well outside of just having the ground on with its drought ability hurricane obviously in its max form doing the most damage as well as the blast burn uh went under sun so we're just trying to maximize the damage there with charizard's output um then you've got venusaur another option for a gigantamax or dynamax pokemon on the team uh i'd say the ground is probably a good candidate for that as well in some situations um but the venusaur is pretty standard here got the cobra berry on this one just to reduce the kind of threat of those flying pokemon now we've got dynamax back max airstream is going to be in abundance everywhere so you're going to need to kind of compensate for that a little bit and coming down a similar kind of vein is what we did with the Zashian team with Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl fits onto these sort of teams pretty well as uh, alongside uh, it, how well it fits on Zashian teams and most teams it does with that screen support but not opting for scary face on this one going more down the line of Thunder Wave just as a sort of speed control here and then we've got Reggie Alecki kind of standard Reggie Alecki give it the life orb just for a little bit of extra uh, a damage output and then rounding off with Umbrian, which gives us a way to kind of also disrupt opposing teams with that yawn the moonlight going to take advantage of the sun you've got snarl there to slow things down and then file play for a, a bit more of a damaging attack so that is a team in a nutshell friends we'll have a couple of games of the team now as i say these teams this week are kind of sample teams they're going to be uh, more meta teams that you're going to be able to pick up and use hopefully help you out get settled into the format and give you a little bit of experience with a bunch of different teams um if you catch every episode this week so make sure you do this is tuesday today this is ground on uh, tomorrow we'll be moving on to kyoga which i'm pretty excited about uh, so we'll jump into our first game. We'll have a couple of games with the, the team today. Pilot, talk through a few of its mods, and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode, as we always do. So sit back, friends, and we'll jump into game one of today's episode. First up today, we have a very similar looking team. We've got a Groudon, we got a Charizard, a Venusaur, we've got a Regieleki, a Torkoal, and a Porygon 2. So... Uh, yeah, very similar looking teams, very similar concept. It's almost a mirror, but there are some slight variations here. They've got a bit more of a Trick Room mod in their team, obviously with the Porygon 2 and that Torque are going to perform pretty well under Trick Room circumstances. So I think if we go down at like a Charizard route, we need to be very careful of that Regieleki lead. But we've also got Grimmsnarl, and I think the screen support is going to be pretty huge for us in this one. So I think we go Grimmsnarl, I think we go Charizard. We could also bring Umbrian just to disrupt our opponent's side of the field because that that would be a huge player behind screens. Um, and then it might give us a bit of room for someone like Groudon to come in and kind of clean up with towards the end. I feel a little bit like we're kind of missing a trick by not bringing Regieleki to this one, but how useful is it gonna be if my opponent, what I'm kind of predicting them to go down a, a hard trick room route or a semi-ish hard trick room route. And that's gonna make it a little bit difficult for us to uh, to get the most out of Regieleki, even though it does have that offensive pressure they can put on from the start. Um, <laughs> which we see my opponent go straight for. So, I think the one thing that we've got, you know, is we have a switch into to Groudon here with Charizard, if we want, to kind of get around potentially any electric type attacks from that Regia Leki, which could be an option. And we could just throw up a light screen, but it does put us in this the, 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 the kind of frame of mind where um, <clears throat> we could be a little bit worse off 
if we because we go light screen right we go light screen and i think we go g max wildfire into the reggie Alecki. now we will take yeah i think we'll do that we should take an electric type attack what we'll, we'll take a, a thunderbolt or a Volt Switch from the Reggie Alecki for sure. The sun's not up, so we're not getting the boost from the solar power. Uh, but the light screen will help us out a bunch against this Reggie Alecki, even though, you know, it will depend. Is it Specs? Is it Magnet? Is it Sashed? A lot of different variations with Reggie Alecki. Um, Specs being the worst case scenario here. Charizard are protecting from my opponent, so that's not actually too bad. Um, and we have pulled the trigger pretty quick with going for a, a, a Gigantamax here, you know, it's normally not always the thing that you want to do. We do see the electric web come out, but that's not the, the worst thing in the world because we do have that that Thunder Wave support that we can go for the next turn if we need to. And we do have Max Rockfall as an option from our Charizard, which could be quite useful into the opposing Charizard for sure. And we do just wipe out the Reggie Alecki. So that electric web, not the worst thing, like I say, not the worst thing in the world. Now we'll see what my opponent brings in to kind of combat against uh, big G Max Charizard. So Groudon coming in. Okay. And we can't slow the Groudon down, unfortunately. That's the one thing we can't can't do. Um, and that will cause us a few issues, of course. We got the ref. Yeah. Let's just see what we've got. Have we got which screen did we get up? We got light screen. We need the reflect. I don't know. We'll not take. A, we'll not take a big attack from this Groudon. We can take a reflect. Or is it is it better off just to Thunder Wave? It's probably better off at this point. You know, I honestly think rather than reflect here, I think we Thunder Wave the Charizard and then we go for a Max Guard of our own. And you've got to think as well. How slow is that Groudon on my on our opponent's side of the field? You know. Like, how slow is it? Because they have a hard trick room mod in their team. So potentially, the Groudon might actually underspeed our Charizard. And if they're going for Rock Slides, there may be a chance that we um, we actually get this Thunder Wave off into the Charizard here. Because we're Max Garden. They Rock Slide, I would imagine. So yeah, we get the Thunder Wave off. Slow it right down. Make life very difficult for that Charizard. There's a the Rock Slide. And then we can get the Reflect up the next turn and go after that Groudon if we want. Or we go after the Charizard. And they are paralyzed. So the Thunder Wave paying off massively here. Yeah, the Solar Power coming into effect. Now, we should be able to get... Um, a Max Rockfall into this Charizard off now. And now the Sun's up. We've got that boost. It might be enough for us to take it down. It's just whether or not we can take... I, I would say we'll take a Rock Slide. It's just whether or not the Groudon actually... Yeah, it's not even going to attack here. It's just going to go for that Protect. So we can go for the um, the Reflect. We get that up, which is going to help us for the rest of this game. The Paralysis there definitely helps on the, the Charizard the last turn. But the Rock Fall here might be enough, depending on... Yes, yeah, enough. Okay. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough. Okay, that's good. Um... And Charizard Grim's not going to be able to kind of see out this turn. Uh, and we still have the Sun as an option in the back if we need it as well. So that's 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 also a good thing. Um, and not often Charizard gets kind of through all its max turns unscathed. But uh, we've had a good return here as the Groudon takes a bit more residual damage here from that wildfire. So, what's coming in? Let's hope it's not P2. It is P2, P2. Can we get a Blast Burn? I don't know if we can. We're probably going to see the Trick Room go up here, I'd imagine. Um, but we can, we can, we can slow this P2 down. We can go for a Spirit Break into it, and we probably want to bring in like Umbreon here, I think. And then we can like put things to sleep, yawn everything, uh, and then get like. Charizard grad on and after that, but my opponent cancels. So um, we are able to pick up a nice victory there for us to start with. And lots of the techs on the team kind of working out pretty well for us in that first one. So good game to my opponent, and we will jump straight into game two of 
today's episode. But up next, we have a... Oh, this looks a spicy team. We've got a Blastoise. It's going to be a G-Max Blastoise, you would assume. Then you've got the Zashi and the Entai. Urshifu, Rillaboom, and Garchomp. Great looking team. And with the Blastoise there, it gives you another option outside of just your general Charizard and your Venusaur. Uh, residual damage. And you've got the um, the G-Max Cannonade, which is the option there in the Blastoise. It's going to make things a little bit more difficult for our, our kind of Charizard uh, Groudon side of the team. But we do have Venusaur, which kind of really does pretty well against most things on my opponent's side of the field. The only thing to really worry about would be that Entai. I think what we'll do is we'll go Grimmsnarl, we'll go Umbreon, we'll go Venusaur, and then we'll go Groudon in the back. I haven't really featured too much of a Leki. Uh, I need to get back in the swing of bringing a Leki in these games. But I think w with what we've selected, we should be okay. I think what my opponent will probably do is try and go for an early um, Gigantamax with the Blastoise, get the Cannonade, residual damage. And really for Venusaur to kind of thrive in this match, we just need to get rid of something like the entire slow everything down, really, you know. So I think that's a big thing for us. Um, Birdo, Birdo, what are we worried about here? The Entai, uh, or the Blastoise, more of the Blastoise, I think. We can also Thunder Wave stuff as well if we want. Um, but I think... Well, Light's green. Go for the yawn into the Entai. Shut that down. Put that to sleep. Or at least force it out. We're not going to see anything. Go for the max here. That's interesting. Sacred Fire. Going to get this maximum damage off into the uh, the Grim Snarl. And gets the burn. So that's kind of to be expected as we see the water spot come out from the uh, last toys. But we're able to take that pretty comfortably behind that light screen. And we should be able to get... A reflect of this next turn although you have to kind of worry about you have to worry about the um, extreme speed but if they go for that then they're putting themselves uh, a massive disadvantage because they, they they will go to sleep if they stay in an extreme speed so it's not too bad and um, we can go for reflect here um, and the yawn into that blast toys So like I say, there's like there's a there's a trade-off for our opponent here. If they want to go for the extreme speed, then they can do that, but it makes things a bit more difficult for them if uh, if the entire is asleep and they can't get the, the maximum functionality out with it. But uh, we're seeing the blast toy switch out. Which I don't mind too much. And Zashin come in, yes. We like to see that on the yawn slot. Because I think here, like Grimmsnarl. Do we get the reflect? We get the reflect. That's that's pretty huge for us. So that's massive, especially against Zashin. Now, Sacred Fire coming out, and this time into Umbrian, which is all right. We do see the burn come out, but again, not really too worried about that, to be honest. Um, and that Entai will go to sleep now. So I think with Grim's not going down here, it should go down to the burn. Pretty sure. Should go down. Yeah. Okay. That opens the door for us for, for. I think we get Venus onto the field now. We go Max Quake into 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 Entai. Um, and we probably want to switch. I think we switch Groudon. Um, but Umbrian. We could be really cheeky here. Could be really cheeky. I mean, we could be cheeky as well and just stay in with Umbrian and just go for a foul play into Entai. Um, that could also be an option. Because I think the turn after that, we're going to want... Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Just if the Zashian stays in and goes for like close combat or Sacred Sword into the Umbrian, it will take us down. But I think the, the Venusaur is a bit more of a draw for my opponent to, to, to go for that Behemoth Blade in. But again, if they stay in and, and go for that, then they've got pretty much two sleeping Pokemon on the field. Um, and then we can get Groudon in after that to get that Chlorophyll boost. Get the residual damage kind of stacking from Venu. And of course, all the time, the, 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 the special defense boosts will be helping out against like something like the Blastoise. It could be a little bit problematic for us. <coughs> See where they go. So Entai fast asleep. And there's the Behemoth Blade. Is it into Venu? I think it will be. 
Oh, it's into Umbrian. That's even better. Well, I mean, we take that pretty well with with Umbrian, with the, the the screens up. Um, yeah. So there's a quake into Entai. It is enough to take it down. Okay. So that that's that. This makes it way easier for us with the Zashin going to sleep now. Um, I think we just switch Umbrian out this next turn. Whatever comes in, we probably want to start the residual damage. We actually get a little bit of chip into that Zashian as well. So Umbrian. The burn's not helping, but the leftovers kind of negates that to a certain extent anyway, you know. Um, we're not in the best of positions. But the Blasto is going to find it hard to come onto the field now. You know. So it's most likely. Oh, it is the Blastoise. Huh. Is it going to max? Are you going to max Blastoise? I feel like I don't even switch out here, you know. I feel like I just go for a yawn. Um, I do I switch to the Groudon here. No, I think I yawn. I think I yawn the Blastoise here because we punish them if they go for like Max Hailstorm into, into Venusaur. We don't really mind that too much because... We've got the light screen up, so they're not going to be taking us out. Um, and then as long as our G-Max Vine Lash does like 50% here, or around that, then we know we can pick up the knockout onto it the next turn um, by just switching Umbrian out to, 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 the, to the ground on. And then we've got the sun up as well at the same time, where we're not getting that disrupted. If we switch ground on here, and then they go for the G-Max, um, well, you know, they're going to go G-Max Cannonade regardless, so they're not going to be able to get the weather up. So it's a bit of a moot point, but you get what I mean. I think getting the speed boost the next turn will be way more beneficial. Because, yeah, the cannonade comes out here, picks up the knockout onto um, Umbrian. And they are life orb as well, so we do get the, the yawn, which is which makes it a little bit easier to deal with. But a max quake will be able to get the, the Zash in this next turn. G-Max Vinyl should get the Blastoise, and then we've got Venusaur Groudon to kind of clean up whatever's in the back. And it may be something like Rillaboom. Oh no. Umbrian is just sticking around. Sticking around. I still think we probably switch in. Uh, do we switch in? Or do we just keep like that? No, I think we go. We go after the Blastoise. Uh, do we? Do we? Do we go after the Blastoise here? No, I think we go after the, the Zash in here with the Max Quake, and then we'll go into Groudon. And then we'll keep Umbrian in the back for later. So, we'll see. My opponent does, but we're going to be able to kind of close this one down pretty well. Yeah, they Max Guard here, and hope that Zash in wakes up. That was kind of one of the things that it did crossed my mind even though I didn't reiterate it to you at the time um, but yeah we're not picking up the knockout on the Zashian but the residual damage here from the Vine Lash should be enough and then that takes us down to uh, our last max turn which we've got pretty good return here as the Zashian doesn't wake up um, which is fortunate for us of course there's a Vine Lash picking up the Zashian we'll get the cannonade residual damage onto Groudon here but we're going to be in a good spot to Hopefully, I think like Fake Out coming out could disrupt us being able to have a clean kind of break onto the Blastoise for sure. But again, we still have, you know, the switch into Umbrian from Groudon. If we do see something like Rillaboom come onto the field now, um, that might be worth doing because. Okay, it's Garchomp. Alright, that's not too bad at all. That is not too bad. Um, so. Yeah, let's just let's just go Earth Power into. I mean, the thing is, the worry would be is if if the Blastoise wakes up and we don't attack into it, that would be my big concern, you know. Yeah, um, and I think we just press this blades at this point. Now the Garchomp could Sword Stance, but it's pretty risky at this stage. I think I think you probably want to just go maybe Rock Slide Earthquake. I mean, even Earthquake's pretty risky, but your Blastoise is asleep, so there's a much worry about going for that. But we see the Dragon Claw come out. I'll take that with Venu. And then the Precipice Blade single target. Yeah. 
and that should put leaf st uh, put it in leaf storm range. With the sun stuff, yeah, I mean, yeah, probably Earth Power gets it, which is a bit more reliable from this from this stage. So we can just precipice in leaf storm. Um, precipice and Earth Power, I think, are the more uh, reliable options here. The Earth Power should get the Garchomp. But if you were worried at this stage, you can always click the Leaf Storm. And we were in a decent spot, aren't we? As we do see the battle cancelled from our opponent. We pick up another win with the team. So that's a good um, showing, I feel, from the, the Groudon team. We've had two good um, archetypes that we've played against today. Again, to give good examples of how the team can pilot. So it gives you a few ideas with how the team can function and how good was Umbrian. Umbrian is just amazing. Umbrian is so good. I do love Umbrian in this format. So we'll jump now and uh, remind you all of today's rental team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. I hope if you do try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. Definitely, if you do, let me know down in the comment section below. Just let me know what your thoughts are on the team in general or the build or a similar build that you've been using yourself in the format. So, um, yeah, we've had a nice couple of games today. I've really enjoyed it. I do like Groudon. I do like this this kind of archetype of team um, and Charizard it, being back with its Gigantamax form is just uh, it's quite exciting when you're playing in a Dynamax format for sure so if you do try it out definitely let me know and at the baseline of it I hope it's helpful and I hope you have a lot of fun along the way so friends thank you so much for tuning in remember this week like I keep saying this week you probably get sick of me saying it we're doing a new team every day and they're going to be the sample teams for kicking off into series 11 to hopefully help you get bedded into the new format so tomorrow we're going to have Kyogre, which is going to be exciting. Kyogre, one of my favorite restrictors, of course. So we'll be back tomorrow with Kyogre. So stay tuned for that, friends. Keep an eye out for it, and uh, I'll catch you all later. So take care until the next time.